Negotiation is conflict with a good intent and mediated by a sound process. In this video, I want to talk about the core, the bargaining stage of a negotiation. The point where you and the other parties get together and craft an agreement. The first part of the bargaining stage, which starts immediately following the opening, of course, is to explore the positions of the parties. Each of you will take it in turns to articulate your position, what you want to achieve, and your desires, your fears, and as much as you're prepared to share about the context for the negotiation so that you can understand one another's positions. What you're doing is looking for two things. Firstly, there are points of overlap, overlapping desires, overlapping needs, overlapping concerns to bring the parties together. And sometimes there will be some easy wins from these overlapping needs and desires. Aside from this common ground, the other thing you're looking for is sticking points. The things that you can identify early are going to be tricky, not so that you can scare yourselves about how difficult the negotiation is going to be, but so you can log those points and know that they're going to come up and deal with them in a structured, logical and rational way. Once you understand each other's positions, you know where the common ground lies, you know where the sticking points are likely to be, you can plan the process of negotiation in greater detail. With an agenda, you can start to make progress. And I suggest you focus initially on the common ground and make progress on the easy things. It is easier to build agreement based on an agreement than it is to build agreement based on a disagreement. So start off with the common ground and structure as much of an agreement as you can based on that. And then you can start to work on the issues, the hot topics, the sticking points. Don't get discouraged by problems that you encounter as you go. My best tip is to ask questions. The more you can ask questions of one another, genuine inquiring questions, the more likely you are to uncover the depths beneath the positions, the intent, the needs, the real desires, and find creative options to solve them. At each point where you can agree something, whether you're agreeing a step in a negotiation, or you're agreeing to disagree, you've identified a sticking point that you both recognize needs to be resolved, summarize. Summarize as you go and make notes. This constant series of summaries of things you're agreeing on will show progress and will be motivating to both parties. When you receive an offer from the other party, whether it's for the whole agreement or for a part of the agreement, Ask yourself, how does it sound? Does it sound too good to be true? Because if it does, there is a possibility it is too good to be true. There's a possibility that they may have misspoken, in which case don't try to take advantage of it because they'll only change their mind later on and you'll get into a pickle. It may be that you've misunderstood. It may be that there is some conditions attached to what sounds like a good offer that you need to better understand before you can evaluate it. But what if the offer you get doesn't sound good enough? Well, remember, it's only an offer. It's time for you to make a counter offer or a request for a concession. And when you're ready to make counter offers, there are two principal ways that you can make them. The first is the if you, then we formulation. If you were to do this, if you were to accept that, if you were to commit something, then we would be able to do, accept, commit that. And the second formulation is if we were to do this, offer that, accept this, then would you 
accept that. Do that. Commit something else. The way that I phrase them as a question makes them sound more like an inquiry than a proposal, and it enables you both to explore the counteroffer and explore the parameters around it. It comes across as a lot less pushy and a lot more collaborative than making the offer saying, we'll do this and we want you to do that. Or we want you to do this and if you do, as a concession, we'll do this. That approach can very quickly break rapport and deadlock a negotiation. The more your negotiation is predicated around a series of questions, so that when the answer emerges, it's one that has agreement of both parties, the better you'll be. Thinking about concessions, you should be going into a negotiation having prepared a list of concessions that you can ask for and a list of concessions that you can offer. That's not to say that other things won't occur to you and your team during the negotiation. But having that list means you are ready for that bargaining that will take place, the series of offers and counter offers. When you're asked for a concession, always make your first response a defense, not an outright rejection of the suggestion, but some acknowledgement that it's a difficult ask and that you may not be able to offer all of it and that you're going to need to think of it. The reason is because if you make concessions too easily, it leaves the other party thinking, oh, that was easy, I should have asked for more. And that leaves them uncomfortable, uncertain, and ultimately less trusting of you. Likewise, if you're asking for a concession, don't expect the other party to readily say, yes, you can have that, because they would be foolish to do so. The cardinal rule, however, is only make a concession when you get something of equal value to you in return. And as requests for concessions continue, my recommendation is that you should make each concession smaller than the one before. That way you will stop the negotiation from spiraling out of control. Ideally, each concession should be no more than half the value of the one before. That way you can anticipate easily where the end of the concession process will end up for you. Another tip is to look for concessions that you can make which have a relatively low cost to you, but a high value to the other party. These will seem like a good deal to them. And for you, there's nothing much in it. Remember that if you are a seller, for example, then the price you pay for components for product is considerably less than the buyer will need to pay. If you have access to ready funds, then the time value of money may mean that getting paid early is worth more to the other party than it is to you. But as each concession is agreed by all the parties, make a note of it, make a note of it conspicuously, as if to say, I've recorded this concession, we've got an agreement, now I'm ready to move on. And my preferred approach is to actually say, this is what I have recorded and read out your record and make sure everyone around the table agrees that there and then and is able to write down exactly the same thing. A whiteboard is a great way of recording that or having an independent note taker that both parties can trust. Finally, what if you get stuck? Because you will from time to time. Well, first of all, take a deep breath and stay resourceful. Maybe even take a time out and have a break. Keep focused on the main goal and keep making offers. Try out different things, ask more questions, learn more about the other party, possibly even share a little bit more about yourself. 
it's usually new information and new perspectives that allow a breakthrough. Questions give both, but sometimes moving the negotiation to a different venue can unlock alternative perspectives. So take a time out and reconvene somewhere else. And my final tip if you get stuck is to return to the common ground. Remind people where that common ground is and how far you've got up to the point where you got stuck to give them confidence that you already made some serious progress and that goodwill will enable the negotiation to move on. The bargaining stage of a negotiation is where you are enacting what could be a conflict situation with respect and discipline and process. If you stay confident, if you stay respectful, if you stay alert and you prepare to take breaks when you get stuck, then you will make progress and you will reach an agreement. Please give us a thumbs up if you like this video. There's loads more great management courses content to come, so please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of it. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and in the meantime, keep learning.